Well, I had a chance to get back to my desk here at the city council chamber, so I thought I'd take it. I uh, wanted to talk to you about a couple of kind of newsy items going on. Uh, number one, if you haven't had this, the chance to read this, uh, Now's your opportunity. This is the 2021 city budget. It's going to be heard by the city council and citizen budget committee over the next several weeks. Uh, it's online. You can check in with the mayor manager's office, get a copy, but this is what sets uh, really the direction for the city over the next year. And if you're interested in it and whether it's homelessness or a park or a street project, or a sidewalk, or any other aspect of uh, city services, this is the place to go and this is the opportunity to affect that. Uh, this council has also extended its utility bill relief assistance program during the COVID crisis to more individuals. We're now talking up to 5,000 people are eligible for this relief program, as well as to commercial users who closed down. Check information on this on the city website. Also, uh, there's a parking holiday downtown in the parking district. Uh, generally, enforcement is no longer occurring but also for the individual businesses who actually support the parking district through taxes. If they're closed, they don't have to pay their taxes. Now, the biggest question I'm getting uh, is what's next? Uh, I got to look at the first draft of the next steps uh, in opening our communities and our economies at the last twice weekly meeting of the governor's Mid-Valley Economic Recovery Team. Uh, the plans out for public and stakeholder comment. Uh, the general guidance, uh, probably good news, bad news, for the public is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's generally the same as we've been hearing since this began weeks ago. Uh, a new change we'll run into is the, uh, they're watching for keeping record of customers or visitors to various uh, uh, employ employers, retail establishment, restaurants uh, for tracing purposes if a, if a COVID event occurs. They're calling for regular health checks of customers and employees, which will probably include uh, temperature as well as a discussion of symptoms. Um, uh, this is going to be a, a real roadmap for what's being called the new normal. I'm here today with uh, Lieutenant Trevin Upkees, who is in charge of the city's uh, behavioral health unit. Uh, we recently had a young man on the bridge, uh, Marion Street Bridge, uh, threatening to jump. One of our officers saved him, and I thought it'd be a chance to talk uh, with Lieutenant Upkees about what the impact of the current crisis, the kind of change in all of our routines has had on people in the community and what it has uh, resulted in in terms of work uh, for the behavioral unit, which is a really special unit. Uh, Lieutenant, kind of tell me what's going on right now, maybe a little about the uh, uh, unit as well as what's it look like out in the community right now? Sure, so some backstory on the unit. Um, it, we've been working on behavioral health issues within the community from a law enforcement perspective for about 10 years now. And we've been partnering with both Marion County um, Health and Human Services and Polk County's Health and Human Services uh, to provide us with expertise in behavioral health issues. Uh, eventually, we were able to get grants secured through the Oregon Health Authority uh, and through the both counties in order to fund two teams within the city and in partnership with both uh, county sheriff's offices where an officer or law enforcement official rides in the car with a qualified health uh, professional. So in effect, we are taking the safety portion of it and the officers that have de-escalation skills to someone in crisis and then providing immediate um, care and relief uh, for those that are experiencing that kind of crisis. How does it look out on the street? Uh, I think a lot of folks uh, are concerned about the trauma of current events, mm -hmm. uh, this whole COVID crisis, the isolation, uh, not going to work, the interruption of routine. What are you all seeing out there? Uh, we are definitely seeing an increase in calls for service in, the, in those areas. Uh, 
around behavioral health, behind uh, be around crises, anxiety, things of that nature. Yeah. So um, our officers are very busy out there trying to uh, help people feel better about those times. Um, we have seen uh, an increase in those calls for service with suicidal ideations, with attempts, um, things of that nature. So. Um, we're trying to bring that stability to people that may not be able to get out to go get the usual stability that they might find uh, in the community. We talked for a minute before we started about uh, what this does, this current situation does to create the kind of anxiety, trauma, whatever, but that it is, it is often the interruption of people's routine. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this whole stay home, stay masked, stay away, stay, stay back, all of that has that kind of, uh, I don't know, isolation mm -hmm. feeling to it. Yeah. Is that part of what's going on here? I'm real concerned about it. Yeah, yeah. We know that isolation uh, causes issues for mental health. And a lot of people that may have experienced prior to this uh, some uh, mental health issues or behavioral health issues, a lot of times therapy results in group uh, and meeting people, uh, going to see a therapist routinely, going to a doctor's office and interacting yeah. one on one, receiving medications, things of that nature. So now that that is interrupted, they're having um, some people are having just as hard a time adapting to not having that routine. And for people that um, may not that have possible coping skill issues, breaking a routine becomes very difficult and can yeah. um, trigger some kinds of uh, problems for people. Yeah, well, it is for all of us. I think we've all been kind of experienced that uh, uh, sudden change in routine. If people want to know more about the unit, uh, where do they go to find out about it? Sure. Besides call you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if they're experiencing a crisis, uh, yeah. call 911. Okay. Uh, if they have... Um, if they have the ability or the wherewithal to, that they just know they want to talk to somebody, there are crisis lines, there's lines for life. Right. Uh, the Psychiatric Crisis Center here in Marion County has a hotline that they can call. Uh, they can, if they live in Polk County, part of Salem, then they can work with the Polk County side. Uh, we also have a good website that we've partnered with, with the um, Mid Valley Suicide Prevention Coalition that has lots of resources on there. So it's out there, a quick Google search, uh, we'll get people there, but uh, our website, the Marion County Health and Human Services website, and then the Polk County uh, Mental Health website as well. Uh, thank you very much, and particularly for having a unit uh, that specializes in the kinds of issues people may be facing during the corona crisis. So thank yeah. you. Thank you.